Hi everyone. I'll be reading from my debut collection, Flesh. Flesh. Some days, I watch shrimp and prawns suffer, their deaths brutal, yet profoundly ordinary. The crisp snip-snip of scissors through vein after vein, the ripped shells revealing pale grey flesh. Mother would season the wounds with garlands of garlic, ginger and lemongrass, turning up the heat till the air itself became tinged with an oily fragrance. I never refused the lightly charred flesh, my tongue glad the way all beasts are when allowed to eat their fill. Mother would always have too much, her rice bowl emptying so quickly, I would never forget the three years she became vegetarian, the famine leaving all the trees bereft of their bark, the villagers so grateful for something, anything to chew on. Autobiography. My detractors think they know me, loud and always too soft-hearted. The time I purchased 50 pairs of frames from a sobbing woman whose eyewear shop was closing down. The day I lost my father and cried myself sick until I thought I would never sing again, though music was my only love during the revolution. The time my daughter told me she was in love with a woman, and I lied and told her it would be okay. What does three years of famine teach a person? Nothing. Except that there is such a thing as perpetual hunger, loss pounding on the windows like rain. Except that my father loved me, and that he came back as soon as he could in the swallowtail butterfly that fluttered around the flat, in our pet papillon, in my beloved child. Wish. I would like to live like the trees. My lover often says, look up as she admires a canopy of green. Her tree-like behavior astounds me. If you looked within me now, you'd see that my languages are like roots gnarled in soil, one and indivisible, except the world divides me endlessly. Some days I dare not look at the trees, they are such hopeful creatures. If the legislators of our world looked to their trees for guidance, would they reconsider everything. Lately, I've been trying to write a poem that might birth a tree. A genuine acceptance of the self continues to elude me. And this last poem is called Tea Ceremony. There are days when I pretend to understand my mother's grief as I coax her into sitting at the table for a tea ceremony, so she might linger on the rush of green into glass, how the scent of leaf dissolves both past and future in one gulp. We drink in a serene silence. My mother smiles a smile that breaks my breath into laughter. She is radiant now, lost in the kettle's repetitive chant, her gaze fixed on the dance of fingers between utensils. I love my mother's joy, her reprieve from the sorrow she adorns with designer clothing. Some nights I tell her, go to bed. She says, I can't, can you stay? As a child, I dreaded her desperate need, my hand resting on her forehead, unable to let go. Even now, with Winnicott and Klein as bedside reading, I can only invite her to the table. Look, mother, your hands are beautiful. Look, our tea is ready. Thank you.